Okay, here we go. Complex numbers. Today is basically our second to last day. We have a test on Wednesday. Today's Monday. So that means today and tomorrow uh, we have our last days to get ready for this thing. Would you please take a look at this? That is a problem I presented you with the other day as just kind of like a, you'll eventually have to do this thing. Do you remember that I squared when you, uh, when you do stumble across it means something? What's it equal to? Negative one, very good. So multiply this puppy out, and wherever I squared appears, use that little property that I squared is negative one, and then simplify it down further until you have a final answer, which might be like 12 plus 2i. It's totally okay to have an i in your answer. A lot of times that happens. I'll pause for a second while you give this one a shot. First outside inside last leads us to 3 times 1 is 3, and then the outside ones would make negative 1i. I messed that up. There we go. Negative 1i. Quiet, please. And then the outside makes, or no, the inside makes 3i, no, 6i. Ah. And then the last make 2i times negative i makes 2i squared, and it's 2 times a negative, so it makes it negative 2i squared. Man, there's negatives running all over the place in this thing. So when you simplify it down, that's really the challenge, is keeping your i's and your negatives straight. And then negative 2 times negative 1, because that's what i squared is, leads us to 3 plus 5i plus 2, and then the 5 and the 2 go together, and you make 7 plus 5i. What if you had it backwards? small slap on the wrist because you're supposed to have the eyes last. It sounds like there might be something wrong. Yes, go ahead. Maybe I screwed something up. Oh, I couldn't read my own writing. That is not a 5. That is a 3. So 3 plus 2 makes 5. Sorry. Thank you for catching that. There we go. Now, I know some kids take that whole you can factor it, you should thing very seriously, in which case you'd factor the 5 out and say 1 plus i. It's okay, but you don't need to do that. This is a totally good answer the way it is. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so are you saying you just did the outside and insides and got 5i? Well, I didn't do like minus 1i. I just did minus 1i. 1i and i are the exact same thing. Yeah, didn't you at some point have a 5i in your answer? Because if you didn't have a 5i in your answer... You... Okay, yes, yes. So you had this line right here, then you're doing it right. Okay, all, I think the only question I really heard in there is, do you have to have a 1 there? No, I and 1i are the same thing. Yes? So is that just how it would just the data that we have just simplify and then... Yep, just simplify and then that would be the answer. Um, okay, so uh, that's a good question. This is not like a quadratic where it's like equals 0 and then you're solving it. So this is just meant to be an expression. It's sort of like 7a plus 2, and then they say to simplify it, okay? It's just a, an expression. It doesn't have an equal. So when we're done, yeah, this is it. There is no, there's no more to write. It's, as you said, it's not a bare answer. No, it's a right answer or a bald answer. It's a, it's a right answer the way it is. It doesn't need an equation. There's no equals in it. All right, let's move on to another one that's very similar to it. Just multiply this puppy out. This should take you like 10 seconds, and you'll see an I squared, and you'll know what to do with it. Would you turn your answer my way, and I'll tell you if you did it right. Yep, 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 yep. Close, you messed up a negative. Yes, yes. I squared needs to be changed to something. Yes, 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 yes. You messed up a negative. Yes, 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 yes. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, as I said before, negatives will be the challenge to just not mess those up. 4i minus, minus 5i squared. And then right away, that changes to negative 1. And since that's a negative 1, negative times negative makes it 4i plus 5, or 5 plus 4i. Which way, technically, should it be? 4i plus 5 or 5 plus 4i? 5 plus 4i. Now, I know I'm the only teacher that really like concentrates on this, so don't stress about it too much. But I know it's supposed to be this way because technically the imaginary part is supposed to be last. Okay, so these do equal the same thing. It's just that the way you're really supposed to do is put the 4i last because it's the imaginary part. Okay, moving on. That one, you know what, we just did one like that two seconds ago. This one's a little different. I know some of you will be sucked into a trap. Let's see if you are. Try this one. Turn it my way again. I'll see if you do it, did it right. When you FOIL this thing out, you got 2 minus 3i, and you got 2 minus 3i. First make 4. Outside and inside together make negative 6, and negative 6 makes negative 12i squared. No, it's just i. Sorry, negative 12i. And then the last to make positive 9i squared. That turns into a negative 1. That makes this a negative 9. Then when it goes with the 4, that makes negative 5 minus 12i. Any questions on that one? Yes? How come when the i is squared, it just becomes a negative 1? Okay, I'll remind you what i squared, of course, means i times i, right? And i is square root of negative 1. So I'm making them both into square roots. The reason this comes out to negative 1 is if you have two identical square roots multiplied, then your answer is whatever's underneath them. Let me show you. Square root of 8 times square root of 8. Well, that makes square root of 64, which is 8. So it's the thing that's underneath them is the answer. Or square root of 3 times square root of 3. That's square root of 9, which is 3. It's just the thing that's underneath them. So the thing that's underneath the roots here is negative 1. That's why i squared is negative 1. Okay. So let's move on to see if there's anything. Well, that's pretty much the same thing, isn't it? You're just going to multiply it out. You'll have an i squared, and you turn it into negative 1. So this becomes pretty easy, and that's all you had for today. Now, that's not the only thing we really need to know, though. So I'm going to take today and review a little bit. shouldn't be just tomorrow that's all the review. So... What have we done so far? Well, a lot of times we had parabolas that would graph, and let's say that they were uh, like this. Those two spots are really important. Those are the roots. And so when are we getting these eyes? When there's no roots, when it doesn't touch. So if it's like this, you will have roots, and they won't have eyes in them. But if it's like this, it'll have roots, and those roots will have eyes in them. All right, so let's say that this guy's equation was y equals x. Let me think. If this has got a, it looks to me like this is at like 5 comma 2 right there. Do you get the equation for it? Would be x minus 5 squared plus 2. Does that make sense to you? Because that's the vertex form. And my 5 got squished there. There we go. Okay. So, tell me what its roots are. Let me give you something I probably haven't said to you before. The quadrotic equation can tell you the roots. Remember how the... If you can factor it, you should. Remember that little thing? Well, I can't factor this one. So I would use the quadratic equation. How are you supposed to use the quadratic equation? You don't even have A, B, and C. You have to multiply it all the way out. Then you'll have A and B and C. Then you can stick it into the quadratic equation. All right, I'm going to give you a second to practice that. Oh, by the way, you see the parabola up on the board? You see the parabola that's new 
in my room. I'm standing right by it. This dish is a parabola. Can you feel it over there? So this thing is a heater that's got a parabola on the background. That's specifically why I bought this heater as opposed to the other ones. Can you, it's the buzzing noise, don't worry. It just has a sensor in it that if you tip it too far, it thinks that it's gonna set the room on fire. And so, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if it tipped over, like let's say the cat walks up to it and goes, oh, that's warm and rubs on it and like flips the thing over. Now all of a sudden your carpet's gonna start on fire. At least there'll be a loud buzzing noise. It doesn't actually shut the thing off. That's what it really should do. But at least it makes a buzzing noise to notify you your house is about to burn down. So anyway, that parabola allows it to focus the heat. It's really cool. Like you can even stand this far away and easily feel it. In fact, if you get it just the right angle, you can see it's bright red. And if you can see it's bright red, then that means the heat is aiming right at you. So at some point, when we, I give you a break here in a bit, you can come over and uh, enjoy the warmth. You know, it's not even that cold out right now, but it's so humid that there's been fog and stuff. It actually makes it kind of cold. If you haven't noticed that before, the more humid it is, the more cold it is. So the most wicked combination is incredibly cold and incredibly humid. And we don't have it incredibly cold right now, but we do have the humid side. Like the, the air's got a lot of, a lot of trapped moisture. Yes. I got that at Costco too. Yes. Yes, I'm kind of addicted to Costco now. Okay. Good for cheap M&Ms and heaters, apparently. All you have to do to get a math teacher to buy it is put the word parabolic on it. Kind of get suckered into that stuff. So right now, you should be multiplying this puppy out because I know you know you can't just take x squared and 5 squared. When it's all multiplied out, you'll have a, b, and c. Then you start the quadratic formula. And there's a smart way to start that. I would always start that with what's underneath the square root, the b squared minus 4ac. When it's all done, an answer like this. be fine. It'll have an I in it if you did it right. I'm not saying this is the right answer. I'm just saying it looks kind of like this. It's got a fraction bar. Doesn't always cancel. Sometimes things cancel. Sometimes they don't. But that is a good simplified answer. It's okay if it doesn't come out to like six. In fact, usually our answers for this chapter come out to complicated things like that. That's called simplest radical form. Yes, ma'am. Correct. The plus or minus is built in right here. That's, well, this is one answer that can be broken into two parts. Once with the plus and once with the minus. So if you actually wanted the final two answers, you'd figure out what the square root of 2 is on a calculator. And then run it once with plus, and then run the whole problem once with minus. It's a good question. The calculator does not have an I button on it. You just have to treat it like a variable. So note, to get a decimal answer for this, your answer would still have I in it. But you'd have like 2 plus I as your final answer if you use decimals. It'd actually be like 2.03 plus I. All right. Thank you. Okay. And y equals x squared minus 10x plus 27. Is that right? All right. So then x equals negative b. In this case, negative b is negative 10. Negative negative 10. So it's 10 plus or minus square root of b squared, which is 100, minus 4 or ac, 4 times 1 times 27, all over 2a, which is 2. Oh, can I just cancel these? No, can't do that. 
You have to factor the top first if you want to do that. Okay, so then this part right here, 4 times 27, 4 times 20 is 80. 4 times 7 is 28. 80 and 28 makes 108. See what I did there? 100 minus 108 means negative 8. X equals 100. No, no, 10. Sorry. 10 plus and minus square root of negative 8 all over 2. Classic wrong answer. Because it's so right, and yet it's just not done yet. How many of you simplified it further after that? Okay, good. Then you knew that the square root of 8 simplified, and you'd take that and make it root 4 and root 2 and root negative 1, which means 2i root 2. That's 2, that's i, and that's root 2. So now it's 10 plus and minus 2i root 2 all over 2. Now we can factor the top. 2 comes out of the top. 5 plus and minus i root 2 all over 2. 2's cancel. There's your answer. How many of you did it without any help from me? Awesome. Then this test is looking good for you if you can handle something like that. All right. So that's that's like a tough one because it didn't wasn't even all multiplied out first. All right. Yes. All right. Well, if they want the roots, the quadratic formula always gets you your answer. Okay? So I might get, give you that a picture of it and say, what are the roots of this? And you might be able to go, well, they're right here, dummy. You're supposed to know that. Okay? But I might give you it like this and say, what are the roots of that? Okay? And then you'd have to go, well, what's the equation? And then I might say, well, it's not stretched, and the vertex is at uh, 3, 2. Could you figure out vertex form of it? Y equals, what is vertex form of that? X minus 3 squared plus 2. And then, if it, and I, I have to tell you it's not stretched, or give you another point so you can see it's not stretched. And then you could go, okay, so what's the roots of that? Well, again, quadratic formula. It almost always comes down to the quadratic formula. You know why? Because you can't get imaginary roots by looking at a graph. You can't see them. So graphing won't work. We can still ask you to graph stuff, but you can't find the roots from that. The roots, the zeros, the x-intercepts for a problem like this needs to come from the quadratic formula. And then the main other thing is, how do you handle quadratic formulas? We've practiced that since the beginning of the hour, this kind of thing. If you can simplify that kind of thing, that's, that's big, that's huge. Okay, and the last thing is, uh, uh, I squared is negative 1, right? So what's I to the third? Would you agree it's I squared times I? So now what is it? Negative I or negative 1I. Good. What's I to the fourth? That's I squared times I squared, isn't it? That's positive 1. What's I to the ninth? Figure it out right now. Compare it with the kid next to you. See if you get the same thing as they did. That's really the question. Is, is it going to be 1 or negative 1? So break it up. Remember, if you can factor it, you should. What you're really doing here is factoring it. Mr. P, break it into a bunch of I squared. So what do you get? I squared, I squared, I squared, and I squared, K. Wait, wait, we got to have one more thing to make it right. There we go. If you get that you can break everything into I squareds and I's, then you get this. Because I squareds are all equal to what? Negative 1. And you go negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. There's four negatives. Makes it positive 1. And then times i. That makes it positive i. No, no. These all get multiplied first. So that makes 1. And 1 times i makes i. 
positive I. That's I. If you want to say one I, it's the same thing. I or one I are the same thing. Yes? Positive one. And so is that. Positive times positive. So just think of it this way. Every two negatives cancel each other out. There's two negatives, they cancel. There's two negatives, they cancel. If there's one more negative left, then the answer would have been negative. So if I make this I to the 11th, then I'd say, okay, well, that's I squared. And could you really say that that's I squared to the fifth, which is like I to the tenth? Yeah. And then with one more I? Sure, that would work. And this would be negative one. Negative one to the fifth would be negative. And then times I. So this would be negative I. Yeah. Good. Yes? We, we tried to always do that, but there, were, there was that one. I did warn you like three times ahead of time that was going to be a tough test, but usually our review sheets are very similar to the test. All right, so I will warn you that in honors pre-calc, uh, as you move up to the next level here, not, not this year, but next year, if you move to the honors version of pre-calc, the, the reviews are not just like the test. You have to really take good notes in class to get ready for the tests, okay, because so we try to make the reviews uh, slightly different than the test, like a little, you have to be able to make little twists. If you're going to move to the honors level of pre-calc, you got to be able to handle tough stuff. That's why not everybody in here probably should go to honors level pre-calc. It's a hard class in the first place, pre-calc. And to go to honors pre-calc, that's supposed to be the ultimate challenge for your age. All right. So, last kind. Uh... Do you remember these from the other day? Yeah. And I had them on my uh, on my com uh, top 20. Do you remember doing that? You dig square root of both sides. But now that we've all grown up, you can even handle it when it equals a negative. Solve that one. Are you bursting into flames yet? parabola like that can focus in and you can actually uh, they can actually do that with the sun and focus it in so on such a tight beam that they can actually make things burst into flames a parabola a, that idea was used way back a long time ago with I think it was Archimedes and he used a set of mirrors to focus the sun and his idea was if you had that as a weapon in your, in your, uh, um, like at your port, as, as ships tried to sail in that were like trying to take you over, you could like burn their, uh, burn their sails down, yep. like their sails on fire by focusing the sun on them. That's all great, except what if it's a rainy day? <laughs> mm -hmm. Same idea as a magnifying glass. It's a little different because. Then it goes through the thing, because it's glass, you know. But a parabola can focus it and shine it somewhere. Parabola. You, didn't, you, you missed it. See that the heater thing? You, were, you weren't here when I explained on this. That's a parabola behind there. And so here, look into it. You see how it's, is it red? So if you can see the red, whoa. <laughs> it, it makes you, uh, the buzzing is if you tip it too far. Um, no, it's not going to burn anybody. It's not going to make you burst into flames. It just feels warm. But it shoots. It, the kind of thing that's kind of cool about it is it doesn't like heat the whole room up really hot. It just can focus wherever you want the heat. Like if you want to be warm and, and you're not trying to heat the whole room, you're just focusing on you. So It won't go all the way across the room. It'll go like three-fourths of the way across the room. So during break, you can get up and investigate. All right, did you start by going square root, square root? Now, this is the part that separates the A's from the B's. If you can't get that this is absolute value of x minus 3, and instead you just think that the answer is plus and minus what this square root is, you're wrong, and it's, it's going to catch up to you. You have to get that this is absolute value. And the square root of negative 8 breaks up into three things. What are the three things? Yes? 4, 2, and negative 1. Good. 
and that one's i, and that one's 2. So it's 2i and a root 2. So it's absolute value of x minus 3, 2i root 2. And then the absolute value means break it in two parts. x minus 3 is 2i root 2. And I, I think it's the best thing to just copy this exact same thing over again because it gets confusing otherwise. But then, you know it's not smart to do it absolutely exactly the same. Why do it twice then, right? So there's only one difference, though. Where? Negative, Negative on that. And then you solve those two little equations, and you'll have your answer. How do you solve that? Well, you just have to get x alone. On this equation, what do you do to get x alone? So the answer is x equals 2i root 2 plus 3. On the other side, add 3 to both sides. And your answer is x equals negative 2i root 2 plus 3. Yes? Yes? You. Uh, is it systematic to do things of the problem? Oh, so in other words, could I write this as 3 plus 2i root 2, and this one as 3 minus 2i root 2? Those are perfectly good answers also. Yes? On the left side or the right side? Okay, of this on this problem here. Okay, on this problem here, when I added the three, yep. Here, I could pl I could add the three on the end of it if that would make you feel better. It does the same thing. Yes. If you had written this answer right here, since the beginning starts with 3, and this is a 2i and a negative 2i, you could have said that. And you'd have been just fine. I just want to be careful that you don't think that it's a good idea to always use the plus minus, or you might think you don't have two parts to your answer up here. So this absolute value needs to lead you to two equations. If it's not, you're doing something wrong. Yes, at the end you can combine them with plus and minus. All right. So this next part uh, is where I, uh, I'll, I'll take a short break and figure out which problems I want you to do. Okay. So here's the ones I want you to skip. I want you to skip 5, 6, and 7, 5, 6, and 7, and then I do think that you could figure this one out. This one's a challenge question, and it's good for you to stretch your brain a little bit. So if you're one of those kids that wants to prove you're at this honors level, then you should be able to look at this problem and say, oh, okay, you're saying that the two roots are this and this. That means that I could make factors for them like this. This is an example. Excuse me. This is an example of how to do this problem here. So I think some of you, my A students, should try this number 13. It's a lot like this one. It's not that hard. If you read through that example, you could handle it. And we wouldn't have anything that tough uh, for the test because we called it a challenge question. All right. So again, you're doing the whole thing except skipping 5, 6, and 7 because I think those are kind of redundant. Now remember, whenever you hit i squared, it's equal to what? Negative 1. Negative one. Okay, good. All right, that's all I got for you for today.